Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining us as we come to a conclusion of a very important series we've been on this week, and that is Healing the Wounded Child Within, How to Recover as an Adult from a Dysfunctional Childhood. And we've been looking at this fellow named Mephibosheth, and you know the story by now. He is the grandson of the king, King Saul. But once King Saul and Mephibosheth's father, Jonathan, were killed in battle, they tried to protect and hide Mephibosheth. A nurse grabbed him and carried him out, but she dropped him and he became crippled in both of his feet. And that would set the trajectory of his life. What happened as a child set the trajectory for his, his whole life. And that's true. What happens to us as children impacts how we become as adults. He was dropped. It was not his fault he was dropped. And many of you have been dropped. And because he's been dropped and you've been dropped, he's living in a place called Lodabar, where it is barren and, and no futility, no productivity. He is in Lodabar. Many of us are in Lodabar right now. We don't have to, we shouldn't be in Lodabar, but we're there because we got dropped. It was someone else's fault. The good news is, is that he does not stay in Lodabar. Something happens. David has become king. David is doing well. And look at what happens in chapter, chapter nine. It says, one day David asked, is there anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? That's 25 years earlier. 25 years earlier. Jonathan's been dead for 25 years. He summoned a man named Ziba who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba, the king asked? Yes, sir, I'm Ziba. I am, Ziba replied. The king then asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. That's, that's David at his best, because most kings would have wiped out all of Saul's family because they would have seen them as rivals to him. But David is secure. He knows that God gave him the throne. When you know God is giving you something, you don't have to feel insecure. He says, I want to show God's kindness to them. them. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's son is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Lodabar. Ziba told him at the home of Micaiah, son of Amiel. David sent for him and brought him from Machaerah's house. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son, Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David says, greetings, Mephibosheth. He calls him Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. And why would he be afraid? Because most kings would wipe out the preceding king's family. Don't be afraid, David said. I have. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise of your father, Jonathan. See, Jonathan had saved David's life. And so because of Jonathan, David's gonna be kind to Mephibosheth. I'm, I will give you all your property that belongs to you, your grandfather saw, and you will eat. Stop here. At the king's table. So for 25 years, listen, for 25 years, Mephibosheth has been in Lodabar because somebody dropped him. He's been hiding. Nobody wants to be in Lodabar. And that's why he's there, because he's gone to a place nobody wants to be. And that's because he's been dropped. And many of you are in a place nobody, nobody wants to be in Lodabar, but you're there. You've become content with Lodabar, but God has a, another plan for your life. We are told that the king sent his soldiers to Lodabar to go get Mephibosheth. And I assure you that when Mephibosheth saw the king's troops coming, he thought the worst. He said, oh, he's coming to wipe me out. But he didn't come to wipe him out. He come to take him in, to bless him. Uh, and when Mephibosheth is taken by escort, because the only way he can get there is somebody's got to help him. The king's servants got to help him because Mephibosheth is crippled. And the God will send you what you need to help you get where you need to go. And the king delivered him out of Lodabar 
And the same king, there's a king named Jesus who can deliver you from Lodabar. He wants to rescue you and deliver you from Lodabar. Well, when he gets to Lodabar, he sees out of Lodabar to the palace. He looks, David looks at him and calls him his name Mephibosheth. I like that because he doesn't call him crippled. He calls him by his name. He says Mephibosheth. And he restores him all the property that belonged to his grandfather and says, look, you shall sit at my table with me and I'm going to do it for Jonathan's sake. For Jonathan's sake. Now, God wants to deliver you from Lodabar, and God will give you the people to deliver you from Lodabar, but you can't hang out in Lodabar. Do you remember Lot's wife? You remember God was delivering Lot's wife and Lot's, Lot and his family from Sodom before God destroyed Sodom because of how he treated the poor? And we're told in Genesis chapter 19, verse 17, uh, God says, of the angels say to Lot, when you when you were, when they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives, don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. And you know what's going to happen. Don't you? Lot's wife's going to look back and she's going to turn into a pillow of salt. One kid in Sunday school said, after hearing this story, said, I got one better for you, Sunday school teacher. And that is my mom was driving the other day and she turned around and looked back and turned into a telephone pole. Well, Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt. And you always turn into something anytime you look back. But notice the instruction. It says, when you are safely out of the city, when you're out of Lodabar, when the angels ordered, run for your lives, don't look back. Don't look back. When God delivers you from something, don't look back. Or stop anywhere in the valley. Don't look back. Neither stay. Keep moving forward. And then it says, go what? Escape to the mountains. What's the mountain? The mountain is higher ground. God wants to take you to higher ground, but you can't get to higher ground out of Lodabar if you're constantly looking back to Lodabar. You can't get to higher ground if you stop and say, you know what? I'm, I'm content halfway between Lodabar and Jerusalem. Jerusalem is on a mountain. It's Mount Zion. God wants you to go to higher ground. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. And the further you get away from Lodabar, the closer you come to Jerusalem. And I'm sure that he's wondering, he said, oh, my God, why is he treating me this way? I'm nobody. I've been crippled. I've been living in Lodabar for 25 years. I'm nothing. In fact, he even calls himself a dead dog. That's how he felt about himself. But every morning, every time when Mephibosheth was at the house, of the David's palace, Guess what happened? Every time he's at David's palace, uh, he's got an assistant who's saying, uh, can I run your bath water for you, uh, my master Mephibosheth? Can I, can I change, change your sheets for you, uh, master Mephibosheth? He's no longer in Lodabar, he's in the palace. Uh, do you need a massage? What do you want to eat? And then when it's time to eat, guess what he eats? He eats at David's table. He's sitting there with all of other David's children, knowing that he doesn't belong, but the king has invited him to come to the table. And God has invited you, I don't care who you are, to come to the table. And you know why? He's doing it for Jonathan's sake, because Jonathan and David had a blood covenant. So that whenever he's sitting at the table next to David, and David passes to him the potatoes, guess what he sees? He sees a cut on David's arm because when he became a covenant brother with Mephibosheth's father, Jonathan, they cut their arms and they became blood brothers. And he saw the wound. And the only reason why Mephibosheth is sitting at the table, and the only reason why he's not at Lodabar anymore is because of a wound on the hand of David because of a covenant he had with Jonathan. And the only reason you and I get to sit at God's table is because Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. All of us have had some trauma from childhood. But God is the God who wants to heal the wounded child within you so that even as an adult, you can recover from a dysfunctional childhood. 
Once you recognize I've been dropped, once you recognize I have been hurt, once you recognize that the reason I act like this is because I've been programmed like this because of what took place in my childhood is not real. Once you can, if you can, confront the people who hurt you and let them know. Once you've done that, and there comes a time when you got to say, okay, God, I'm giving this to you. Help me to move forward. And when you move forward, you move out of Lodabar and you don't stay in the valley. You go on up to a higher ground and don't look back because if you look back, you may turn into a pillar of salt or as like the young man said, you may turn into a telephone pole. It's time to heal. I don't know who needed to hear this lesson this week or if you got to go back over some of the other lessons and process it, but do it. You only have one life to live. It's moving fast. Only what you do for Christ will last. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and this week and all we have learned this week. Don't let us just be hearers. Help us to be doers. If we need to go to counseling and take the next step, help us to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you so much for being with me this week. And, and please keep writing me, contacting me. Let me know some of the things you think that I need to address. I, I want to I want to address issues that are relevant to you from the word of God. So contact us. Look, if you don't have a church home, uh, reach out to us here at St. Stephen Church, New Start in SSCLive.org. We'd love to have you become a part of our church. Look, um, we're going to, this is Saturday and we're excited about what's going to take place tomorrow and we're going to worship God tomorrow. So you join us for worship tomorrow. The pre-worship service begins at nine, then the worship service actually begins online at 930. So I hope you will join us then. But until then, look, you go over these notes again, get healed and don't forget, God loves you. Don't forget, God can help you. God can get you out of the bar. And during this crazy time in which we're living in, don't forget to stay safe and stay sane. Don't give up. Don't lose hope because God's in control. I'll see you in church tomorrow. Take care.